Okay, I'm making this crazy looking video and it's just a walkthrough, talk through. More than a walkthrough because I'm not going to key anything down, but I'm just talking about SWR and especially input SWR. I get a lot of uh, confusion and misinformation about input SWRs and that's why I kind of threw all this together. Uh, just trying to give a talk through and maybe a little bit of a visual but I'm not keying down again about my thoughts on um, especially input SWRs so I always use this big dummy load up here that's like a 5,000 watt um, 50 ohm dummy load that gives me a you know good match and I can run 5kW through it and I don't have anything that uh, near 5kW so I have a good match you know because I hook everything up for the dummy load for my testing and no false watts and all that other stuff so let's say I hook a radio like that Browning Mark IV there up to uh, my dummy load you know I'm gonna get a perfect match um, I could use the um, SWR meter built into the Browning you know key up calibrated and do that or I can put a watt meter in line. I like that digital one there, that auto calibrating one, because uh, you don't have to calibrate it. You know, you can uh, adjust stuff and tune stuff and, you know, your watts or your tuners and stuff. And um, you don't have to recalibrate that meter. It automatically uh, um, calibrates, you know, when you key down. Or I could put in, you know, my big giant meters and take them off watts and put them on SWR and and you know use those but the thing about these is um, and those is you know as you change stuff you know um, your calibration changes so as you go up and down if you um, you know move stuff a lot like your watts or you know you're adjusting a tuner or something you have to keep checking on your calibration and that's one of the reasons I don't like those but anyway that's not really what I was trying to get at on this video um, let's say and I did crazy stuff like this back in my young days as a kid and I didn't know what I was doing but let's just say for the sake of argument that uh, I want some swing I want crazy swing and I'm gonna push this stuff hard as I can so I'm gonna take the browning and I'm gonna hook it into the JB12 and I'm gonna put the JB12 into the JB76 and I'm going to put the 76 into the uh, Palomar 300A. And I'm going to put the Palomar 300A into the Alpha. You know, and I'm going to back it down so I don't, you know, kill my Alpha. But, you know, back in the day, I might experiment with stuff like that. Actually, back in the day, you know, I was a kid. I got my first decent-sized amp, a Drake L4B. And um, I had a JB12, JB76, and I think I had a Palomar Skipper 300A. And at one time, during my experiment, and as a kid, I would play with the JB12 into the JB76, into the Palomar uh, Skipper, into the uh, Drake L4B. And I could, you know, make that Drake, you know, depending on how hard I kick it or, you know, how I set the uh, two uh, black hats and all that. I could dead key from one watt and swing to about uh, 2,000 RMS. Or I could hit it hard, you know, with the Palomar, you know, hitting three, 400 watts dead key into the Drake. And I could make that Drake, I only had a 2,000 watt meter, uh, I could make it, you know, dead key in the corner. But anyway, I'm just saying that, you know, people using drivers like this is not impossible. And then big boys... I'm talking about the multi kilowatt guys, but let's say just to pull one out the air. And I know people, big boys who run stuff like this. You know, let's say they got a 3CX 20,000. It's their big amplifier. You know, a, a 40, 50,000 watt amplifier. 3CX 20,000, just to pick one. You know, a lot of them that I know, they use a 3CX 3000 for a driver. Some of them use a dual 3CX 3000 for a driver. And the tube of cho or the amp of choice to drive the 3CX3000 is usually a dual 3500Z uh, amp, like a Heathkit or a Drake L4B. And then if you're using a CB radio, you need, you know, something to drive the um, Drake L4B with. So, they, they, you know, some of them use black hats. Some of them like something that will kick it a little harder. So uh, some of them might use a Palomar Skipper or, or something like that. 
Um, and then some that like swing, they might put a JB12 at the beginning. You know, these are big boys. So a big boy may have, a, you know, a, a, let's say a tram and then a, a JB12 into a, you know, Palomar Skipper 300 into a 3500Z into a uh, 3CX 3000 or a dual 3CX 3000 into a big box, you know, 3CX 20,000, 25,000, dual 20,000, you know, this this is reality of, you know, big boys and all that. But anyway, I didn't want to harp on that. I just wanted to say that it's possible uh, to have, you know, like a radio drive and a driver or a pre-driver into another driver into another driver into a big box. And the reason I bring that up is about input SWRs. What's considered to load is the thing that the amplifier is pushing or driving, right? So if I'm going into the dummy load and I have this as the final amplifier, the dummy load up oh, there is not a good picture, but the dummy load would be the load. You know, the final thing that this amplifier is driving if that's the last one, right? So my SWR, if I put a SWR meter between this amp output and my dummy load or an antenna, but let's just stick with dummy load, which is my load for this walkthrough or talk through, um, my SWR that that would read with the amp on and operating would be the um, SWR between the output of this amp and the dummy load. However, if I was driving that amp with this guy, um, this guy is going into this amp in that same scenario, and I put an SWR meter after this amp in between, you know, that one, you know, the input of that one and the output of that one, the SWR would be different because this amp is not driving the dummy load. Um, um, you know, if I got this amp, driving this amp and let's say my dummy load blows up or my um uh let's say my coax between my dummy load has a bad connection or you know it goes bad it's open circuit right so this amp since it's driving this amp the load for this amp would be the input of this amp and i had an swr meter in between there and let's say the SWR, you know, for the input of this is 1.5, right? So my input SWR for this amp, which would be the output of that one, would still be 1.5. But let's say this amp, like I say, you know, I was pushing it too hard and my, my coax uh, uh, went out. So now the load for this one is not correctly connected to the uh, dummy load because it went out. Now the uh, load for this one if I had the SWR still between this and the um, dummy low, it would be sky high. So I got a sky high output SWR on this, and I got a decent input, you know, SWR on this. However, if this is being drove by the Black Cat JB76, it's the same scenario. I, I got them all on, you know, all, all tuned up and all activated. So my load for the JB76 here would be the input of this Palomar 300A. So if I had a third SWR meter and I wanted to see, you know, what's my input SWR for this, I would have to have a, a SWR meter in between the output of the JB76 and the input of that. And if I wanted to see, you know, what's my um, input SWR to amp, I would have to have another SWR meter in between that and that and if I wanted to see the um, output SWR of this I would have to have a SWR meter in between my um, this amp and the dummy load and then if I drove all that with this into the 76 this JB12 is driving into this JB76 you know this power for this is going to just reach the uh, input of the tubes here. It's not going to reach to that or that or that. It doesn't care what they're doing. You know, if I had a short between the JB76 and this, the input SWR wouldn't matter here. It's just driving the input of the tubes, right? Um, so I could put another uh, SWR meter in between 
the JB12 and the JB76, and then it's still another one. If I got the radio going into the JB12, the radio, the load for the radio is the input or the tubes of the JB12 if I got it all going. So again, I would need another uh, SWR meter in between the uh, radio or the JB12, or in this case, since it's the radio and it has an internal uh, SWR meter, I can put that on SWR and calibrate it and um, do the internal meter. And I hear all the time people say, hey, I got no output, but my SWR between the, um, the, the amp and the antenna is good when I got the amp on. It's like, how can you measure that? Uh, 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 SWR meter won't measure unless it's got power going into it, right? So if you got an SWR meter on the output side, you know, it is, let's say on this alpha going into the dummy load, and the alpha goes bad, it breaks, it's got no output, right? No output whatsoever when it's on, then therefore my SWR meter, even if I put an automatic calibrating one or a manual calibrating one, it's not going to read anything because the alpha ain't putting anything out. And again, there are many um, different um, places where you're going to have SWR depending on what your load is. If I got all these in line and I got them all turned on and all going at once, there's a um, SWR the um, going between the radio and the JB12. And that would be the input SWR for the JB12 or the output uh, SWR for the um, radio. And then the um, input SWR of the JB76 would be the output SWR of the JB12 in between there. In between the um, JB76 and the J, um, Palomar 300. In between the Palomar 300 and the Alpha. And then one last one between the Alpha and the dummy load, right? Uh, so that's the way SWRs work when you run an amp. You know, if I ran just the um, Browning into the Alpha and then the Alpha into the dummy load, I'm not going to get a lot of power because it's not hitting yet, but hard. But the load for the radio would be the input of the Alpha. And I could just have use the um, radio's SWR meter for that. And I could read the, you know, the input SWR of the alpha on the radio if I didn't have all these you know in line or had them in standby right and um, the output of your final amplifier which is the last one the one that's gonna drive the antenna or your dummy load and that's why they call it the final it's your final one you know before the um, antenna usually um, that's gonna be your um, final SWR and that's only gonna be between your antenna and the amplifier and if you run a lot of power, sometimes you might start with the low SWR, but if your coax and your um, antenna are not handling that power, and the more power you put in it, that SWR starts creeping up. And input SWRs, uh, again, you know, if I'm running the JB12, and there's a tuner in the back that tunes input SWR, but it also tunes, you know, your amount of watts. That if I wanted to tune it for a low SWR for the uh, JB12 input, you know, I would tune that on the back of the JB12 and look at my SWR meter on the radio. And vice versa with all these amps. So you can have many, many different, and you do. You're going to have many, many, many different uh, input SWRs if you run in amps and drivers and finals and all that stuff. You know, even if you got a radio driving a driver into an amp, you got uh, three SWRs. You got the final, you got the SWR between the um, driver and the amp, and you got the SWR in between the um, radio and the um, driver. And one doesn't have anything to do with the other when they're keyed down, right? When you're using them, them all, if they're in standby, it's a different thing. If I had all these hooked up and they're in standby or they're off and all that, 
then the radio, the power is going to go through all this stuff. It's just going to go straight through, hopefully, even though you got your relays and some sniffer caps in there for the key in circuit and stuff like that. And then it's going to go to the dummy load. So if I hit, even though I hit them all in line, but they're off, my SWR would basically be the dummy load, even though all this stuff in line would interfere with it. But if I hit them all on, Again, you know, input SWR between this and that, and in, uh, input SWR between that and that, input SWR between that and that, input SWR between that and that, and then your final SWR between the um, uh, amplifier and your antenna. Even though it'd be crazy to run that one into that one into that one into that one, but I've seen people actually do that and worse. Um, and if you really wanted to see all your SWRs, I would need a SWR meter. You know, I could use the radio for the radio, but in between each of these, and then on the output, I would need another um, SWR meter. And back when I'm really serious about tuning stuff and all that, you know, for me, you know, that's why I have four here. I could do that. I could look at see what my watts are doing, you know, the drive watts, input watts, feed driver watts, you know, SWR, you know, because I got all the meters, but it's a it's a bear to put all that in line, you know, just to see that. But I hear people talking about input SWR, output SWR and all that. I don't think they know how it works. Um, again, trying to simplify it. If I have this radio driving this amp and then this amp going into the dummy load. The radio is driving the tubes to these amp or driving the driver tubes at that. And the input SWR for the radio would be the SWR of them tubes, you know, depending on how good the um, the input tuning circuit is of this amp and all that. But basically the input um, SWR would be the SWR between the tubes the driver tubes at that since this is two driving four the driver tubes input and the radio that's an input SWR there's nothing to do with the output and again if somebody tells me hey I got a good input SWR but it ain't doing no watts if an amp ain't doing no watts you can't possibly test the output SWR with the amp on. It's got to be doing some watts for you to get a reading to be able to calibrate it. So anyway, um, that was more of a rant. But that's my rant for today. Alright, hope it helps. Bye.